Welcome everyone again to another class with me, Sean Helene. And today we're gonna to be working on some of your favorite stuff, including stretching the outer hips, working the core a little bit, and then adding an arm balance or two at the end. And what you'll need today is one block or one block-like thing, a belt or a strap, so either a yoga belt or just a belt that you wear around your waist. If you have two blocks that you can use, that'll be helpful, but it won't be absolutely necessary. So let's go ahead and get started. And like we often do in my classes, I want you to start on your back for a couple of minutes with your strap or your belt. And we'll just begin by stretching the hamstrings and the outer hips a little bit. So go ahead and lie down, grab your belt, slide your belt around your left foot, stretch your left leg up, and your right leg down onto the floor. With your right leg down onto the floor, push your right thigh into the ground. And as you push your right thigh into the ground, push your foot up into the strap and squeeze your left leg. And then release and switch sides. Place the strap around your right foot, or right leg up to the sky. Press the left thigh into the floor. Squeeze the right leg and press the foot up into the strap again. This is Supta Padalushasana. Recline hand to foot pose. And then release, switch sides again. Place the strap around your left foot. Stretch your left leg up to the sky. This time, take both ends of the strap into your right hand. Make sure that your right arm is straight. And then take your left leg just a couple of inches over to the right. Now the aim here is not to twist, right? So sometimes we take this into a twist where we let the hips turn. This time, as you take the leg over to the right, I want you to keep your right knee, right toes pointing straight up to the sky. Take your left hand now, grab your outer left hip, and I want you to grab the hip so that the thumb of your left hand is between your belly and your thigh, and the four fingers wrap around the outside of your hip. As you exhale, roll your outer left hip down away from your armpit towards your right foot. Now, as you roll the left hip down, squeeze the left leg a little bit more, and then very gently bring your left foot towards your right armpit half an inch, but keep rolling the left hip down. Breathe. Whew, all right. And switch sides. Take your right leg up. Supta Padangushasana. Keep the right leg straight up to the sky just for a moment. Press the left thigh down. So again, the idea here is that when you take both ends of the strap into your left hand and begin to move the right leg over to the left, your left foot, your left thigh doesn't turn out at all. Keep the left toes glued up towards the ceiling. And then as you take your right leg over to the left, you'll feel the stretch move more into the lateral side of the hip and the hamstring. Grab your hip with your right hand and place the thumb between your belly and thigh, four fingers around the outer hip, and as you exhale, roll the outer right hip down. Oh, You'll actually feel, if you're able to get enough leverage with your hand, you'll feel the whole hip kind of tack down away from the armpit. And then can you keep that tacking down? Bring your right foot towards your left armpit and squeeze both legs a little bit harder. And then inhale, come on out. Move your strap off to the side. Bend your knees, place your feet to the ground. Then cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Interlace your fingers behind your left thigh. Thread the needle pose. And then switch. First one's just a very quick hold. Hold behind your right thigh as you cross the left ankle over the right thigh. And then switch again. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Hold behind your left thigh. Now this time, on this side, I want you to bring your awareness to the space between your outer ankle and your left thigh. So the part of your foot and ankle touching the thigh. As you exhale, I want you to push the ankle into the thigh, 
until you begin to feel the side of your right hip, your right glute engage. And that's the part of the hip that you were just grabbing a moment ago and rolling down manually when we were stretching out the hamstrings. Switch sides again, cross your left ankle over the right thigh, hold behind the right thigh. So now the tendency here in this pose is to use the left arm in this case to kind of push your left knee forward. Today instead what I want you to do is to get your left thigh to move, push the ankle into the thigh, Use the strength of your left hip and glute to try to roll your left knee away from you. Great. And then one more time. Now this time, grab one of your blocks, or your block-like thing. Hopefully it's not too heavy, whatever you're using. Place the block on your thigh and cross the right ankle over the block. Interlace your fingers behind your left thigh. Now this intensifies the stretch a lot, and if it's too much, or you're barely able to grab your thigh or your knees just all janky, just go back to the very first variation we did without the block. Now whichever variation you have, push the right ankle into the block of the thigh, use that to engage your right glute, and do your best to roll your right knee away from you a little bit. Then inhale, release. Switch sides, again using the block or no block, hold behind your right thigh, push the ankle forward into the block. Use that to try to move your left knee away from your chest a bit. And then slowly release. Ooh, very nice. And then come on up to seated. Spin around and come onto your hands and your knees for a tabletop position. Inhale, lift your gaze and your butt up for cow pose. And then exhale, round your back and come to cat. Two more like that. Inhale, look up. Press your butt up. And then exhale, round in. One more round. Inhale, look forward. And exhale, round in. Come back to a tabletop, walk your hands forward, tuck your toes, stretch your hips back, downward facing dog. Separate your feet nice and wide. I always go as wide as my mat to begin. Bend your knees a bit, reach your hips back, stretch the arms forward, and then re-extend your legs a little bit straighter. Then bring your feet back to about hips distance apart. Inhale, come forward to a plank pose. Now in this plank pose, I want you to do a little bit more of a rounded plank than you might normally. So do a little cat pose in your plank. Round your back, pull your ribs up, but keep your shoulders over your wrists. Then go back to downward facing dog. Two more like that. Inhale, come forward to plank. Press into the ground. Round your back to a little cat pose here. Exhale back to downward facing dog. And then inhale, come forward to plank pose. Round your back more than you're used to. And then go back to downward facing dog. Walk all the way to the back of your mat, standing forward fold. And then inhale, stand all the way up to the sky. Exhale, hands to your sides, Tadasana. All right, so now we're gonna do something that I call warms your legs up very fast. I'm gonna to turn to face you. Might be a little bit easier to follow that way. So standing with your feet separated about hips distance, I want you to step your right leg back about two feet. So you're like in a super small lunge. Have your back heel lifted. Then step your right leg across and behind your front leg. Now from here, bend both of your knees without letting your back knee touch your front calf. As you bend your knees, push your butt back, and then just kind of let your hands hover. You can bring them to a prayer, you can flutter the, I don't care. As you bend your knees and move your hips back, try to keep your chest a little bit more upright. And hopefully the name of this pose is not leading you astray. Hopefully your legs are warming up very fast. Come on out. Switch sides. Step your right leg back about 
two feet, back heel lifted, cross the leg behind, again bend your knees, move your hips back, shift your hips a little bit to your left, and the more you sit down, the more I want you to try to stay upright through your spine. I am warming up very fast, and I hope you are as well. All right, come back up. Now let's add on to that a little bit. Step your right leg back again. Take your right leg behind and across. So same kind of idea. Take your hips back and down. Keep your knees nice and bent. Place your left hand onto your left thigh. Stretch your right arm up by your right ear. And then as you exhale, twist and place your right elbow to the outside of your thigh. Fold your palms together. Press your right elbow down and turn your chest up towards the ceiling. Inhale, come on up. Whoa! And switch sides. Step your left leg back. Cross your left leg behind. Bend both knees. Push your hips back and down. Then, keeping your hips low, right hand to your right thigh. Reach up through your left waist. Deep breath in. Exhale. Left elbow outside your thigh. Palms together. Root your left elbow down and turn your chest. This won't be a super deep twist because it's still early on, but hopefully it allows you to find a little length in your waist, but mainly your legs probably feel exhausted. Come on out. All right, now please step all the way to the front of your mat into mountain pose. In up, stretch your arms up to the sky. Exhale, fold to the floor, standing forward bend. In a length and halfway. Exhale, please step your right leg to the back of your mat. Lower your right knee to the ground. Inhale, take your arms up, hook your thumbs, stretch upwardly. Exhale, release. Step back down, we're facing God. Inhale, come forward to a plank. Pause in your plank. Round your back, then shift forward, bend your elbows, lower down. Inhale, cobra or upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, please take your right leg into the sky. Exhale, bring your knee to your nose. Pause here, pull your knee up, round your back like a cat. Inhale, take your right leg back. Exhale, step your right foot forward, left knee down. Inhale, arms up, hook your thumbs, stretch up. Exhale, hands to the floor, step forward, standing forward fold. Inhale, all the way up to stand. Exhale, hands to your sides. Second side, inhale, reach your arms up, stretch. Exhale, fold to the ground, Uttanasana. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, left leg back, left knee down, arms up, hook your thumbs, stretch. Exhale, release, step back down the dog. Inhale, the plank. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Oh, God. Up and exhale, downward facing dog. All right, here we go. Inhale, take your left leg into the air. Exhale, bring your knee forward towards your nose and pull your knee up as it comes in. Inhale, stretch your left leg up and back again. And then exhale, step your left foot forward lightly, right knee down. Again, inhale, arms up, thumbs hooked, reach up. Exhale, hands down, step to the top of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, arms up to the sky, reach. Exhale, hands to your side. All right, hopefully you're warming up as much as I am. Inhale, reach your arms back up and overhead. Exhale, fold to the ground, forward fold. All right, from here, step back to downward facing dog. This is gonna be a little bit of a weird lunge. I want you to take your, let's do left leg up first. 
Now normally we do right leg, but take your left leg up. Now step your left foot about a foot behind your left wrist. So it's a shorter lunge and a wider lunge than you used to. Move your right hand a few inches to the right. Keep your right palm flat. Now take your left arm up to the sky, and as you do, turn all ten toes to the left. So you're in a side plank variation now. So make sure the left foot is flat, but you're on the outer edge of the right foot. First, raise your hips up as much as you can. And even though you're only on the outer edge of your right foot, try to reach your inner right ankle to the ground as if you were trying to stand flat on your right foot. Keep your hips lifted and then reach your top arm past your ear. Release your left hand down, turn on your toes, step back, down your dog. Second side, take your right leg up into the sky. Step your right foot about a foot behind your right wrist. You can move your left hand off to the left a little bit. Then pivot on your feet as you take your right arm up. Now, to make this less intense, if it's too much on your hip, you just walk your right foot back a little bit towards your left foot. Same thing, hips up, reach your inner left ankle, turn and stretch your chest up to the sky. Then, stretch your arm past your ear and reach it fully. Inhale, release your right hand down, pivot on your feet back to down and facing dog. Inhale, take your left leg up into the sky behind you. Exhale, step your left foot forward to a lunge. Inhale, arms up, high lunge this time. Keep your right arm by your right ear. Put your left hand on your left thigh. Reach up tall through your right waist. Exhale, twist. Right elbow, oh, to the, I love this pose. Right elbow to the outside of the left thigh. Fold your palms. Push your right elbow down, twist your upper back. Then, from the strength of your legs and your hips, slowly come back up to a high lunge. Hook your thumbs like we were doing in our sun salutations. Reach. Exhale, hands to the ground. Step back, down the facing dog. Inhale, right leg up into the sky. Exhale, step your right leg forward between your hands. Inhale, high lunge. You'll notice we're not doing too many vinyasas, and that's because I don't want your upper body too tired for what comes later. Keep your left arm up, put your right hand on your thigh, take a deep breath in, reach up through your left waist, and wait for the exhale. Twist. <laughs> now as you root the left elbow down to the thigh, try to pull and turn your upper back to the sky. Ooh, that rhyme. Oh God. Inhale, slowly come back up, rising from the strength of your legs, arms up, thumbs hooked. And then exhale, release your hands down to the floor. Step forward to the front of your mat. Come to a standing forward fold. Inhale, stand all the way up. Reach and exhale, hands to your sides. Awesome. All right. Now from here, again, I'll just turn to face you so it's a little bit easier to follow. Separate your feet about hips distance. Then bend your knees slightly. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Now if balancing in this pose is a huge difficulty for you, then go ahead and use the wall because I don't want you to have to focus on balancing. I want you to be able to focus this time around on the actions of the hip and the ankle. Bend your standing knee or your left knee and push your hips back until you feel a stretch in your right glute. Try to keep your shoulders on your back. Then, like we were doing at the beginning of class on our backs, push the ankle down into the thigh to engage your right glute. Then inhale, come on up, release, and switch sides. Cross the left ankle over the right thigh. Bend your right knee. Move your hips back more than down. And then same thing. When you push the ankle down to the thigh, hopefully you feel the muscles of the side have engaged. Those muscles in turn help to rotate the thigh out and move the knee down. 
Now, if you're really flexible when you do that, you might just end up kind of pushing your right hip over to the side. You can look at me, even though I look ridiculous right now. So keep the right hip in and try to focus it on just the left hip. If you don't have too much mobility, that's probably not much of an issue. It's probably not happening so much in your body when you do this. All right, come on up. Come back to the front of your mat, Tadasana. Inhale, arms up to the sky, reach. Exhale, fold to the ground. Come to a standing forward bend. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, step back to downward facing dog. Inhale, take your right leg up into the sky. Exhale, now bring your knee towards your right arm. If you can actually touch the knee of the arm, don't actually touch it, but barely hover it. Then take your right knee towards your left arm. Same, don't actually touch the knee of the arm. Now shoot your right leg off over to the left. Separate your legs about 90 degrees and lower your hips to the floor. Oh, oh, I've lost myself in the camera, but you get the idea. Now, push out through your feet. Make your legs really straight and strong. This is called Brigitte's Cross. And then push into the floor, lift your hips, downward facing dog. Then second side, inhale, take your left leg up into the sky. Exhale, bring your knee to your left arm. Whoa, God, this is so hard. Again, don't touch the arm. And then take your left knee towards the right arm. Try to keep the hips up. Ooh, it's almost up. Then shoot the leg over to the right. Slowly lower down. I have to maneuver a little bit. Slowly lower down. If you can't split your legs 90 degrees, you can bring them a little bit closer together. Stay up on your hands. Again, push out through your feet. The legs tend to go to sleep in this pose. And there are variations where you begin to fold, but just stay upright in this one. Then, inhale, pull your hips up, whoop, and exhale back to downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, come forward to a plank. Exhale to the floor. Reach back. Interlace your fingers, lift your arms, chest, and legs up off the ground. Locust pose. Then release and press right up to cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog pose. All right. Now, from downward dog, come down, grab your block or block-like thing. This is going to be a very active form of pigeon. You'll place your block at the lowest setting at the front of your mat. And then you'll bring your right shin forward and place the shin up on the block and come up onto your fingertips. Now, if your hips and hamstrings are tight and bringing the shin more or less parallel is difficult, then you just angle the block in more so that the shin is still on the block, but you've just turned it all in a little bit to make it nicer on your hips. This whole thing that your shin has to be parallel with pigeon is just nonsense. It's poppycock, as I say. My favorite word for nonsense. Now, instead of letting your hips drop down and collapse, I'd like you to push your shin down into the block until you feel your right glute fire. You should also feel a lift in your pelvis. Place your hands onto your hips. There's a lot of work. The more you press the shin down, the more you'll find lift, and let yourself just coil into your upper back a bit. I'm gonna even point my back toes here, and then come on out slowly, and switch sides. This pressing down of the shin and the foot, this will become more and more handy as we move on through the class. All right, same thing here. This is my weaker hip, so I'm going to have to shorten my stance. So if you're having a hard time finding balance or lifting the pelvis, you bring your back knee a little bit more forward, and that gives you more oomph to push down. So push down, oomph up, hands to your hips, shoulders back. Hopefully you're feeling both a bit of a stretch and some work into the left glute. Point your right toes if you like. Breathe, oh, and release slowly. Move your block off to the side, 
and come back to downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, walk your hands to the back of your mat. Take your feet as wide as your mat. Just turn your toes out, come into a squat for a moment, just to let your hips turn the other way. Oh, oh isn't that lovely? And then come back to a forward fold. Mm. All right, now I'd like you to grab your block. You'll need a wall space for this. You know, just put your block up against the wall. Then have a seat on your block with your back up against the wall. Now this might be a little bit, oh no. Oh no. This might be a little too intense for you. And if it is, you can either do a pigeon on your back, right, thread the needle, or go back and do the pigeon on the block on the one that we just did again. From here, cross your right ankle over your left thigh. So very intense in the hip, very intense in the hamstring. Try to keep yourself up against the wall as much as you can. And if you like to intensify this, if you're <laughs> very mobile in your hips, you walk your bottom foot, your left foot, closer in. All right. Now it's hard to find here because you're in such a deep range of motion, but can you push your ankle down into your thigh, engage your glute, and the movement of the knee and the thigh here will be small. So press the ankle into the thigh and see if you can let the right knee move forward without letting your left hip come up. Press your left hip down, lengthen up through your spine. Then before you switch sides, wiggle your left foot forward first. You're coming out of the depth of the pose. Oh, okay. Okay, second side, here we go. Oh, left ankle over the right thigh. Now when I come into it, my butt ends up scooching away from the wall a little bit, which is again fine, but I'm gonna try to put my sacrum back up against the wall. And then same thing here, push the ankle into the thigh, fire up the left hip and see if that gives you maybe half a movement, half an inch of movement of the knee away, but keep the right hip grounding down. Breathe. And then to come out, wiggle the right foot forward first, uncross your ankle. Then, Move your block off to the side. Here we go. Forearm plank. Come back onto your mat. If it seems like it's getting darker as I teach, not because it's nighttime, but because a hurricane has moved in, essentially. So it's not just you. <laughs> now, come down onto your forearms. I like to interlace my fingers for forearm plank so they don't have to focus exclusively on keeping the turn of my upper arms. Now, take your hips about as low as your shoulders, press the undersides and the pinky finger sides of the wrists down. And if you want to intensify, you can come onto the tops of the feet. But if you come onto the tops of the feet, you have to really end up working the tops of the feet down, working the core more, push the wrists down like crazy. Now normally I time this on my phone, but I can't, so I'm just going to assume that was already a minute, if not three minutes. So we'll go for a little bit longer. Oh. If you pointed your toes and you're about to buckle from the own exhaustion of your pose, I tuck your toes back under and see if you can go a little bit longer. If you want to go longer, you can pause it and just hold it until you collapse if you like. That was plenty for me. All right. Now let's continue on our core journey and we're going to work towards a pose called Ardha Navasana. Stretch your legs forward in front of you on your mat and then I want you to take your hands and grab the sides of your mat like this. As you exhale, I want you to push the mat forward and round your back. Now, as you round your back, excuse me, as you round your back, begin to roll back just a little bit. 
Keep your lower back off the ground. Walk your hands back a little bit more. Now your sacrum will come onto the ground, but your lumbar spine is going to stay off the ground. Round your back. Sacrum is that bony part right at the pant line. It's a big bone where several of your vertebrae fuse when you're a toddler. Then lift your right foot as high as your right eye. Lift your left foot as high as your left eye. Round your back more. Push the mat forward. And then inhale, come on up. Ooh. So that's the beginning part of Ardhanavasana, which is half boat pose. Most of you are probably familiar with full boat pose, where you're trying to keep your chest lifted and your legs high. Half boat is much more about core engagement than full boat. Full boat is much more about leg, hip flexor, upper back engagement, contrary to what a lot of people think. So, we can try the full pose, <laughs> or you can keep doing what we just did, but we're all going to start the same way. Grab the sides of your mat, push the mat forward again to round your back, <laughs> and then very slowly, you do shift from your tailbone, which is at the top of your buttocks, to the center when you go back. But the low part of your spine stays off the ground. Then you have to round, like do the deepest cat pose of your life. Lift one foot, then the other, and either stay here, or without falling onto your back, interlace your fingers behind your head, suck your shoulder blades into your back. And then inhale, come on up. Whew. The longer your legs are, the more difficult that pose becomes just in case you're at home with your very long legs and you're wondering, what? What is this pose? All right. Now, place your hands behind you. Bend your knees, put your feet on the ground. Let's do one more of these. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Ooh, my hips are feeling nice and open. Now, with your right ankle over your left thigh, lift your chest. And if you feel like you've got more space, you can walk your hip closer to your heel. But however far you go, I just want you to be able to keep the lift in your back as if your back were still up against the wall like we did a moment ago. And then you guessed it, push the ankle forward into the thigh. Use that to see if you can roll the right knee away from you a little bit. And then if you did that, did you just lift your left butt cheek up? Keep your left butt cheek down as you externally rotate your thigh. Oh, I can't see you, but I bet you're doing this again. Chest up, shoulders back, and then walk your butt back, and switch sides. Left ankle over the right thigh, walk your butt in a little bit, or a lot. Again, focus on being able to keep the lift of the chest, press the ankle into the thigh, keep your right sit bone down. Breathe. Now, if you feel not much of a stretch at this point in your hamstring, your hip, if you've got really, really open part of your body at that point, you might just be feeling an engagement in your left glute and a lift in your chest, which is not for nothing. It's not for nothing. Then inhale slowly, come on out. Stretch both legs forward. All right. Now, here is where having two blocks will be handy, but certainly not necessary. I'm going to use two blocks to make things a little bit easier for me. Okay. Start by sitting on your shins and place your blocks or your palms on the floor underneath your shoulders or even a little bit behind your shoulders by a smidge. Cross your ankles. This pose is called pendant pose and it's not the most accessible arm balance by all means, but it really teaches you how to pull back through your upper body like calf and press down into the hands, which are two really important aspects of many arm balances. So round your back first, then push down, lift your knees up, try not to lift your hips too much, then lean forward a little bit more and see if you can pick your feet up off the ground. Okay, switch sides. Now I have foam blocks I don't know why I grabbed my phone block for this. Cork blocks would have been better. But um, yeah, the, the harder the blocks, the less pressure on the wrists. So I, I regret grabbing these blocks. Round your back. Pull your knees up. 
Lean your upper body forward and try to pick your feet up. Woo! Okay. Back to downward dog. Inhale from downward dog. Come forward to a plank pose. Lower to the ground. Reach back, interlace your fingers, lift up, locust. Then inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Walk your hands to the back of your mat. Uttanasana, forward fold. And then inhale, come on up. All right. Let's do two more things. Now, I think it would be best if we opened our hamstrings a little bit more before our final big pose. So, I want you to come into mountain pose with your right foot up on the block at the lowest setting, or your block-like thing, and your left foot on the ground. Now, your right knee will have to bend because of this experience. Like, you can't really, I mean, you could straighten your leg, that would feel awful. Bend both knees a little bit, come into a standing forward fold, Walk both of your hands over to the right now and see if you can squeeze your right leg a little bit straighter. Oh, push your inner edge of your foot down like crazy as you do this. And then inhale, come back up and switch sides. Place your left foot up on the block, right foot down. Again, initially your left knee will be bent quite a bit. It might stay bent the whole time. Bend your other knee, your right knee, come to a forward fold. Try to straighten your right leg first. Then maybe walk your hands over to the left and push your left foot into the block and begin to straighten your left leg any amount. Press the inner heel down like crazy. Big toe bound down like crazy. And then come back up. All right, so now we're gonna try a pose called Ekapada Galavasana which is a really difficult arm balance in terms of both flexibility and range of movement in the hips, as well as strength in the shoulder girdle, wrists, core, etc. So the blocks are going to make it a little bit easier for those of you who have a more limited range of motion in the hips, but it's gonna make it more terrifying in terms of the fear of falling. So, I would watch this to begin, especially if you're unfamiliar with this pose. So if I'm going to come up right behind my blocks, cross the ankle over the thigh, bend my standing knee, push the butt back, place the hands to the blocks. Then my right knee goes around to the right armpit and the right toes hook around the left tricep. Then I have to wiggle my standing foot back, otherwise I'm not gonna go anywhere in this pose. And as I wiggle my standing foot back, I bring my chest forward at the same time. Now before I imagine ever trying to come up into the arm balance, I shift my weight into the blocks, round my back like all of that work we were doing. Then I have to push my shin down into my arms like that pigeon work we did, and engage the right glute. That is very important in this pose and very rarely talked about. Then kind of round the back so much, press the shin down so much that maybe the left foot comes up off the ground. And then I'll come on out and release. And some of you at home are like, wow, I'm so far away from that. And it might be again, just that the glutes and the hamstrings prevent you from being able to curl in that much. Some of you, it might just be a matter of being able to really get the upper back to round, the hip to engage, and the shin to press. It also might be a little bit of fear, being able to shift far enough forward. So now on the second side, I'm going to show the full pose, and I'm going to get rid of the blocks. Just so if you're at home and you want to experiment with moving beyond the beginning stages. All the same work. Toes hook around the arm, knee to the other arm. I still have to wiggle the foot back. I still have to push the shin down around the back and then come up. Now, if you're stable, you extend your right leg back and extend the chest forward simultaneously. A lot of the time, when people start to extend their back leg back, they fall out immediately. 
And that's because the more you extend out, the more the opposite end of you, in this case the chest and the head, has to go forward simultaneously. If you think about, I don't know, is that physics or geometry? Who the hell knows? But, you know, that. But there you go. Perfect. I'm sure that was helpful. So try that once or twice. If your hips aren't there, if you can't do that range of motion, you want to do an arm balance, you're more than ready and warmed up for crow. I have a crow tutorial I did a few weeks before this video that you can check out. You'll definitely be ready for that. Or if you were just barely starting to get this pose, that Kapata Galavasana, I recommend pausing and trying it once or twice more. You'll really get it after just trying it and your body starts to learn. All right, now we're gonna wind down. Lie down on your backs. Oh. Bend your knees. Actually, you know what? Take your block. This will be much nicer. Place your block at the middle height underneath your shoulder blades. So if you look, you can see right where the block is. Make sure your hips are on the floor and do a nice supported back bend. Oh, after all that forward bending, this should just feel like heaven. slowly. Remove the block from underneath you. Lie down all the way onto your back. Now do one bridge. Lift your hips, interlace your fingers, and walk your shoulder blades underneath you and together. Press your forearms and your wrists down. And then exhale. Lower your hips to the floor. Hug your right knee to your chest, stretch your left leg straight on the floor. Then scoot your butt a few inches to the right. Take your right knee across your body to the left. And turn your head and your chest to the right, look to the right. Inhale, come back to center. Hug your left knee in, right leg on the floor. And take your left knee to the right, and as you do so, just shift your butt a few inches to the left so your spine lines up. Inhale, come back to the middle. Hold onto your knees. Happy baby pose if you'd like to finish. And then knees and shins together. Pull yourself up to a little ball, and then release to Shavasana. Stretch the arms out, legs out, take a deep breath in. Ah. And relax. Just take a nice deep breath in. <sighs> Bend your knees, roll to your side, and gently come on up. Ah, so I hope you enjoyed simultaneously stretching and strengthening your hips. It is a lot of work, but it is often healthier to open your outer hips in that way. Like I often say at the end of my videos, I'm happy to offer this, my teaching, on a free platform. But of course, I appreciate any small donation that you can make to support me 
as a teacher of this video 12 years um, payment information is down in the comment section no the description section if you have questions you can write to me or put it in the comment section if you have requests please let me know if that was too short of a shavasana turn me off go back i should cut it short because i have to go catch a plane i'll see you next time